ولا علي بن الحسين ولا أولاد الحسين ولا أصحاب الحسين. We send our heartfelt condolences to you all on this night, the eve of Ashura, where we are broadcasting from the holy city of Karbala, the land where the sky wept blood and where blood could be found underneath every rock after the tragedy of Imam Hussein's massacre. After the heart of Sayyidah Zainab was broken, watching her beloved brother that she grew up with all her life, after losing her mother, after losing her father, seeing her brother not just killed, but seeing his heart break when he held Ali Azgar and Ali Azgar met his death, seeing his back break when Abu Fadl Abbas fell and the flag of Abu Fadl Abbas fell, and seeing his soul almost leave his body when his son Ali Al Akbar met his death. And finally seeing him there in the plains of Karbala, thirsty, a stranger, with no one to help him, and his body covered with spears and shimmer sitting upon his chest. It is truly a feeling I cannot describe being here in the holy city of Karbala, knowing that in just a few mere hours, this tragedy will fall upon us once again, as it does every year. And with all the tears that we cry, with all the lamenting that we do, as you can see, Behind us, the processions. There are so many processions going on in Karbala right now. So many uh, millions here in Karbala. It's absolutely packed to the rim of people, mostly from within Iraq, who have come to pay their respects to Imam Hussein and his half brother Abdul Abbas. Amongst all this lamentation, we also need to ask ourselves what lesson are we taking today from the story of Imam Hussein? And as I mentioned in the first episode, one thing that I've tried to put on myself and one thing that I've advised all the viewers to do and my guests are doing as well inshallah is find something in our life that we need to work on a value that we need to work on something a lesson that we need to take on board in our lives and try and act it out in these 40 days that we have beginning with the first of Muharram and ending with the Arba'een of Imam Hussain as we know tomorrow is the day of Ashura but the morning does not end there in fact it continues and intensifies until the day of Arba'in, inshallah, when the millions and millions of pilgrims shall return to the holy grave of Imam Hussein to pay their respects. And today, inshallah, we shall be looking at how Sayyid Zainab, Imam Hussein, and the family of the Prophet dealt with tragedies in their lives. And how we too should be dealing with tragedies in our lives. It's no, it's no secret that, especially for the lovers of Ahl Bayt, especially for the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tragedy befalls us every day. Every day we hear people that are losing family members, going through hard times, going through divorces, going through uh, their business closing down or losing money, becoming poor. These are things that affect us on a daily basis. And if there's anything that Imam Hussein and Sayyid Zainab taught us, it's how to deal with these tragedies that we face every day. So inshallah today, I'll be joined by Sayyid Ali Nawab once again, where we shall be tackling this. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa and uh, may Allah, uh, and I offer my condolences to you uh, on this solemn and heartbreaking night, the eve of Ashura. If you can begin, uh, not just the discussion, but also lead into the Masaib and tragedy of Imam Hussain in the context of how we too should deal with such tragedies in our life. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, I would like to offer my deepest condolences to our awaited Imam and Savior, Sahib al-Asr wa zaman Ajarullah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, as he is the, the immediate person affected by this tragedy, I offer my condolences to Lady Fatima al Zahra, Salamullahi Alayha, the mother of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, to the grandfather of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, to the father of Sayyid al Shuhada, Salamullahi Alayh, and to the brother of Imam Hussein, Alayhi Salam, to the ulama to the mu'mineen and mu'minat, wherever they may be. Adham Allah ujurana wa ujurakum. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our mourning in this mourning season and our lamentation, our cries, uh, and our azadari. And that, inshallah, we are given another opportunity very soon, inshallah, to serve Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam to the best of our abilities. No doubt, we as human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us to this world. And as we discussed in the previous nights, this, this life that we are living now, 
and those who have lived life before us and those who will live this life on this world after us in the next generations they would live life as a means of test and um, life on this earth is not meant to be easy it's not meant to be um, uh, happy and all rosy as it is a life full of tests and uh, calamities and problems we tend to face tragedies um, either from our own immediate circles or the circles around us and we always learn from Ahlul Bayt and this, this should be the case in all situations in happy days in sad occasions uh, in the morning at night whatever you will go through make sure that you bring Ahlul Bayt into your life and you join Ahlul Bayt uh, in whatever they went through um, because at the end of the day the whole purpose that we are living on the face of this earth is to be able to um, leave this world with a clean page with a page Inshallah. or with a book full of uh, good deeds and, yeah. and good a'mal and especially the love of Ahlul Bayt the, we educate ourselves with the education of Ahlul Bayt so we are eventually resurrected on the day of judgment and we uh, would be um, from uh, uh, amongst those who will receive the um, uh, intercession of Ahlul Bayt and specifically uh, the master of martyrs Abi Abdullah Al Hussein insha'Allah uh, in the ziyarah uh, of Amir al Mu'minin or amongst the ziyarat that uh, Imam Ali alayhi is uh, uh, visited on when you visit the shrine of Amir al Mu'minin, one of the ziyarat tells you to face towards Karbala and visit Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And one segment of that ziyarah, whilst you are in Najaf visiting Amir al Mu'minin, you say to Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Assalamu alayka. Ya Sahib al Musibat al Ratiba. Now, we might question what is the connection between Amir al Mu'mineen and Abi Abdullah al Hussein. We are visiting Amir al Mu'mineen, we are in the land of Najaf. Why does the Imam, the Ma'soom, um, the Infallible, uh, ask us to visit Imam Hussein? And as we discussed from the beginning, and we mentioned that Abi Abdullah al Hussein is the inheritor of the prophets and messengers. And he is most obviously the inheritor of all of the attributes and the characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his father Amir al Mu'mineen. And here the Ma'soom, the Imam, wants, wants us to visit Abi Abdullah al Hussein and mention the tragedies that Abi Abdullah al Hussein went through amongst the ziyarah of Amir al Mu'minin to say that Abi Abdullah al Hussein is a continuation of the work started by the Holy Prophet and Amir al Mu'minin salawatullahi wa salamu alayh. And if it wasn't for the um, sacrifice of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, the message of Rasulullah and the hard work of Amir al Mu'minin salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in would have, uh, God forbid, gone uh, astray or just gone haba and manthura. So the ziyara says, peace be upon you, O possessor of the um, perfected calamity. Assalamu alayka ya sahib al musibat al ratib The everlasting and renewing tragedy and calamity throughout time. One of the brothers today, was asking why do we every year we mourn Abi Abdullah al Hussein we sit down and cry for the same masaib the same tragedy is mentioned year after year in the same majalis as, as if we have memorized we know the tragedy of Imam Hussein by heart but why is there that feeling that, for example, in an eve like this, the eve of Ashura, Laylatul Ashur, Min Muharram, 
we feel as if the tragedy is going to actually happen tomorrow. Inshallah, when you come to the land of Karbala one year and you happen to be here on the eve of Ashura, you will be able to feel the feeling that me, myself and brother Nuri and the thousands of those who are rotating around the, the burial site of Abi Abdullah al Hussein are feeling. It's as if the tragedy is going to fall upon Islam tomorrow. What is it? Why is that feeling there? And that is the heat that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam spoke about. إِنَّ لِقَتْلِ وَلَدِيَ الْحُسَيْنِ لَحَرَارَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَا تَبْرَدُ أَبَدَا This heat and this love in the hearts of Mu'mineen will never die down, will never cool down and it will extinguish and it will reach its, its ultimate heat on the eve of Ashura, Laylatul Ashur min Muharram. Let's try to imagine the environment or the atmosphere in the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein in this very night where the companions of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Bani Hashim, Ahlul Bayt, and specific, specifically Abi Abdullah al Hussein spent this night reciting and reading the Holy Quran and praying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The narration narrates, Kana lahum dawi nahl. They had this buzzing sound like the sound of a bee flying around one room because they were busy facing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, focusing all of their attention and concentration towards Allah in this very night. They did not give any regards to the thousands of the members of the army of Yazid ibn Muawiyah who was surrounding the campsite of Abi Abdullah al Hussein salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. That heat existed in their hearts and did not allow any fear to enter the hearts and the camps of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. But Lady Zainab wanted to ask a question, wanted to make sure that the companions in the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein are genuine in their belief and their sacrifice and their promise to Abi Abdullah. So she asked Imam Hussein, Akhi Ya Hussein, have you tested the, your Ashab, the companions, and have you taken their word for what they are going to do tomorrow? And as you can hear, the beating of the drums and the Mu'mineen and the Mu'minat chanting the slogan, Haydar, Haydar, Haydar. Similarly, when the companions found out that Lady Zainab st is still unsure of their loyalty, Habib ibn Mudahir came to the camp and the, and the khayma and the tent of the Ansar. He went around one by one telling them, get ready and come out and stand in one line. Why Habib? What has happened? Habib told them, the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib is still unsure of our loyalty. She believes or she thinks that there might be people amongst us that will leave Abu Abdullah al Hussein tomorrow when the fighting gets heated. Here, the companions of Abu Abdullah al Hussein in the close pro proximity of the shrine of Abu Abdullah in the Mukhayyam, they came out and they started chanting with slogans to make sure that they make the enemies of Ahlul Bayt hear them and shiver from that roaring sound. Here, Abi Abel Fadl al Abbas, Bani Hashim, they came out from the tents. They wanted to know what's happened, what is happening. Here, Habib says, O oh, Bani Hashim, go back to your Khiyam. It's just that we are practicing our stand for tomorrow. Here, Lady Zainab was assured that Yabnata Amir al Mu'mineen, we are here and we are ready to sacrifice not only our lives but also the blood of our hearts, our families, our women, 
and our children are ready to sacrifice their lives for your sake. Ya Aba Abdullah, these tragedies started in the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein in the morning of the 10th of Muharram when the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically Omar ibn Sa'ad, he brought an, a bow and an arrow and he directed it towards the Khaimah of Abi Abdullah al Hussein and he shot that arrow and he started saying to his people, bear witness and take that message to the Emir, meaning Yazid, that I was the first person that shot an arrow towards the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And they followed course. They all, thousands of those who carried bows and arrows, they directed and they shot their arrows towards the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Try and imagine, started raining arrows upon the Khiyam of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Arrows entered the Khiyam, the women, the children, the little girls and boys in the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. They weren't ready for this kind of situation. So the women and, tri and children came out crying and shouting because they clearly were afraid of that situation. So this was a glimpse of the situation and the atmosphere in the camp and amongst the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, the eve of Ashura, an evening like this, and in the morning of Ashura. In the ziyar, as we said, we read, we say, Alaykum minni salamullah, abadan ma baqeet, wa baqiya al laylu wa nahar, peace of Allah be upon you forever as long as I am existent and there is day and night. O oh, Abba Abdullah, we amongst the thousands and thousands of the Zuwar of your shrine, we renew our allegiance to you, Ya Abba Abdullah. And we say, Assalamu alayka Ya Sayyid al-Shuhada, in lam yujibka badani inda istighathatik, وَلِسَانِي عَنْدَ اسْتِنْصَارِكَ فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ سَمْعِي وَبَصَرِي وَلَحْمِي وَشَعْرِي لَبَّيْكَ يَا حُسَيْنِ لَبَّيْكَ يَا شَهِيدٌ لَبَّيْكَ يَا مَظْلُومٌ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ أَوْ أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam in ziyarat al-Nahiyya says Ya Aba Abdullah, the fact that I wasn't present, I was not present in Karbala to sacrifice my life for your sake, Ya Aba Abdullah. La andubannaka sabahan wa masa'a wa la abkiyanna alayka badala dumu'i dama. Ya Aba Abdullah, we will follow and we will continue your mourning day and night. We shall mourn you, Ya Aba Abdullah, from the morning until the night. And we shall cry for you so much until our cries, our tears turn into blood. This is the cries of Imam Al Mahdi in the evening of Ashura. How are we going to give back the love and the emotion and the sacrifice that Abi Abdullah Al Hussein sacrificed for our sake on the day of Ashura? Sayyida Zainab, the sister of Abi Abdullah Al Hussein, says to Imam Zain Al Abideen once they were ready to leave Karbala, Bunay, Ya Ali, Waliyajtahidanna Aimmatu Al Kufr, Wa Ashya Al Zalala, Fi Mahwihi, Wa Tatmisihi, Fala Yazdadu Atharhu Zuhuran, Wa Amurhu Uluwa. Here, Lady Zainab promises to Imam Zain al Abideen, Ya Zain al Abideen, do not get worried, do not be worried. The fact that your father Hussein and his companions and his Ansar and Sahaba and his family members have been killed and martyred today. Do not worry because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send lovers and muhabbeen and followers who will show love for Ahlul Bayt and they are ready to sacrifice their lives for our sake. 
you see brothers and sisters on your screens images and footage of those who have dressed in black as if to say ya aba abdullah this is our kafan these are our shrouds and these are our swords and weapons we have carried them and we have come out on the streets and in the vicinity of your shrine and Bainul Haramain to show and to prove not only to the world but also to you Ya Aba Abdullah that we are ready to sacrifice our lives for your sake Ya Aba Abdullah and this lady Zainab continues in saying and the leaders of apostasy and their promoters of misguidance shall try their best to obliterate and efface it yet it shall get more lofty and said what were the reasons what were the reasons that the message of Abi Abdullah al Hussein lived on and continued days after days, night after night, years after years, centuries after centuries, and today, after 1,300 and so years, lovers and muhabbin and followers and companions of Abu Abdullah al Hussein are coming out in their hundreds and thousands renewing their allegiance to Abu Abdullah al Hussein what is it in this history of Abu Abdullah that renews itself year by year it is the fact that there was a connection in this movement in this reform there was a connection of this revolution with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the day that Abu Abdullah came out from Medina and moved towards Mecca and Karbala his intention his sole intention was that this reform and this movement was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was no room for worldly desires to affect the hearts of the so companions of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. There were exceptional circumstances surrounding this revolution because there were women and children who joined in in the revolution of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. These are exceptional situations. If you go and research and read the books of history about previous revolutions, any individual, any commander, any leader that started a revolution and revolted against any group or any community or any government, note that they did not and I repeat, any commander in historical revolutions did not bring out his women and children to be amongst his camp and caravan. But there was only one man and one man only that came out and revolted against the tyrant of his time who was an oppressor, who, who looted people's rights who came out with with the most tragic manner and killed innocent individuals in his community in his nation abi abdullah al hussein the only leader that came out and brought his family and children to join him in his revolution and in his reform did he not know that his revolution his reform this movement is going to end with the tragic death and martyrdom of himself and his family and companions yes he knew but he still moved on because he said sha allah an yarani qatilan wa sha allah 
أن يراهن سبايا وشاء الله أن يرى أطفالي ورضعي ذبائح في سبيلك في سبيله and in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the tragedies that fell on the day of Ashura and tonight we shall remember a short scenario of what happened on the day of Ashura after everyone in the camp all the soldiers in the Qiyam of Aba Abdullah al Hussein went to the battlefield and fought bravely but unfortunately they all were killed and martyred on the plains and fell on the plains of Karbala the only living soldier in the camp of Aba Abdullah al Hussein in the afternoon of the 10th of Muharram in Karbala was Aba Abdullah al Hussein himself only Imam Hussein came stood by the Qiyam by the tents of the women and the children he started calling Ya Zainab Ya Umma Kulthum Ya Ruqayya Ya Sukayna Ya Rabab Ya Ramla Ya Layla one of the names of this very night is Laylatul Wida. Why? Because in the early hours of the 10th of Muharram, the women and children were in the camp sitting inside the tents. They were advised do not come out why because there is a battle going on and we fear for your lives every time anyone wanted to leave the sons of these women al qasim ali al akbar the brothers of qasim abal fadl al abbas and his brothers every time any one of them wanted to go to the battlefield they would have individually come and stand by the tent of their sister or their mother or their wives and bid farewell to these women and children but it was time for Abba Abdullah to come one more time one last time to bid farewell to these women and children they all rushed out they surrounded Abba Abdullah al Hussein one of them came she took the cloak of Abba Abdullah and started smelling the sense of Abba Abdullah one of them fell to the feet of Abba Abdullah and started kissing the feet of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. One of them was saying, Abba ya Hussein, where are you going, O oh father? Uncle Abbas went to the battlefield and never came back. Qasim went and never came back. Our brother Ali went and never came back. Oh father, you will go and we are afraid that you will go and never came, come back. Imam Hussein alayhi salam wiped upon their hearts and their heads and advised them told them be patient alaykum bisabr alaykum biddua here there was one little daughter of Hussein 
يا حسين يا حسين وغلت الدوتر of أبا عبد الله never came out to say goodbye to her father it was little سكينة little سكينة sat down inside her خيمة أبا عبد الله as Zainab sister Zainab where is my little daughter where is my little daughter Sukaina? Uh, sister Zainab said, Brother Hussein, she is inside her khayma. Imam went and sat inside the khayma of Sukaina. He saw Sukaina sitting in a position and she's put her head between her arms and her leg. Sukaina, why didn't you come out? I want to go to the battlefield. Sukaina said, Oh, Father. My heart is aching. I cannot bear to see you go and never came back and never come back, oh Father Hussein. In this midst, little Ruqayya came in and she saw that Sukaina was sitting in the lap of her father Hussein. Ruqayya said to her father, Abaya Hussein. Promise me you will come back. Imam Hussein alayhi salam promised Ruqayya, I will see you and you will see me once again. Imam Hussein kissed them both, wiped upon their heads. The way they treat orphans is as if to say, when I am going to be killed, there will be no one to wipe their hands over your heads, my daughters. Imam Hussein came out and said, Man alladhi yuqaddim li jawadi wa ana ibn bint rasulillah. Man alladhi yuqaddim li jawadi. وأنا المظلوم من الذي يقدم لي جوادي وأنا العطشان الغريب who is going to give me and bring me my horse here lady Zainab says أرأيت أختان قدمت لشقيق غافر سلمنون ولا حمن وخليل Lady Zainab came she is pulling ذو الجناح towards أبا عبد الله الحسين أبي عبد الله الحسين puts his hand on the heart of Lady Zainab and he says اللهم أفرغ علي الصلاة Sabr, ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow my sister to be patient when she faces calamities and masaib after me. Abi Abdullah al Hussein rides upon his horse. It's as if he wants to go to the battlefield. He hears the cries of Abdullah al Rabi. He says, Bring me Abdullah. They bring Abdullah al Rabi. He takes Abdullah al Rabi to the battlefield. He says, Ya Qom, Ala Tarawna Kaifa Ya Talava Min al Ata. اسقوه شربة من الماء والأبي عبد الله was facing the enemies and speaking and speaking to the enemies suddenly حرملة من كاهل الأسد says I took out one of my three-headed arrows I positioned it in the heart of the arrow I shot the arrow towards the neck of عبد الله الرضيع فذبحه من الورد إلى الورد the imam noticed the head of عبد الله tilt to one side and the blood is gushing out from the throat of عبد الله الرضيع he no 
noticed the little Abdullah took out his arms and hugged Abba Abdullah is as if to say, Abba Ya Hussein, these people have given me the water I was looking for. Abba Abdullah, in a very, very sad and tragic way, came behind the tents and dug a trench, a little grave, and buried Abdullah in that grave. And he started making his way towards the battlefield. I will not read the maqtal. I will not read the masaib. My last musibah is as he was going to the battlefield. He heard the sound of Lady Zainab crying out, Mahlan, Mahla, Yabna Zahra. Imam Hussein came back. He said, what is it, my sister? I am going to go to the battlefield. Lady Zainab said, Akhi ya Hussein, inzil min ala dhahri jawadik. Abi Abdullah, come down from your horse. Abi Abdullah came down. Lady Zainab says to Abi Abdullah, Aba, Abi Abdullah, افتح لي أزرار قميصك Oh brother open your shirt What do you want to do O oh sister Zainab Lady Zainab said Aba Abdullah Open your shirt Imam Hussein opened his shirt Lady Zainab came She kissed the chest of Aba Abdullah Just try and imagine that scenario She kissed the chest of Aba Abdullah وشمته في نحره she turned towards Medina. She said, Assalamu alaik ya ummah ya Fatima. Laqad isturja'at al-wadi'a wa udiyat al-amana. Oh mother Fatima, this amana that you gave me, I have returned. What amana, sister Zainab? She says, Akhi ya Hussein, the day that our mother Fatima passed away, moments before, before she gave me this amana, she said, I will not be present on the day of Ashura for me to kiss my son Hussein in his chest. I want you to kiss him in his chest and smell his throat. Why the chest and why the throat? Because Lady Fatima knew that on the afternoon of Ashura, horses will trample upon the chest of Hussein and she will sit on the chest of Hussein with his sword. He will behead Abba Abdullah. Labbaik ya Hussein. Labbaik da'i Allah. Labbaik ya Atshan. Labbaik ya Dabih. Assalamu alaikum ya Mawlai. Ya Abba Abdullah al Hussein, I know we are quite limited on time, but there is a poem that I wanted to recite, inshallah. And I'd like to, before I recite this, I'd like to send my condolences and apologies to our master, Sahib Rasul Zaman, for reciting what is known as the Maktal, or the killing of Mount Saint Islam, and the preceding poems that happened after that. As you are well aware, Saint Ali recited some of the most saddest moments so far. Is that this time I want you to picture? And this is a poem that I want you to recite on the paper. <laughs> is that this time where everyone is gone? Imam Hussein looks at the battlefield, Ali Akbar is gone, Qasim is gone, Ali Azgar is gone, Abbas is gone, everyone is gone. And the Imam Hussein Ali Islam had jumped the battlefield as was narrated. They say when he fell, there were so many spears in his chest, the hadith said he looked almost like a they say well, there were about 1,700 wounds upon the body of Imam Hussain 1,700 wounds. After all this, after all the calamity he's faced, Shimmer comes and sits upon the chest of Abba Abdullah. <laughs> it's here that Sayyidah Zainab stands on the tell, the hill overlooking where Imam Hussain is, and she sees this shaitan sitting on the chest of her brother. And she tells him, I beg you, Shimmer, don't suffer his head. 
bring your sword to me and take mine instead. He sits on his chest and he watches Zainab run. Beside her brother, no brothers and no one. Is there any to help me? No, there is none. In her hopelessness to her brother, she fled. She screams to Shimmer, leave my brother alone. The arrows cutting him for his pain atone. The cuts on his body, they have reached his bone. And the dust weep for holding the blood that he's bled. Leave my brother alone. Maybe he'll reawaken. You sit on his chest while his back is broken. His eyes watch Zainab by her grief stricken and he watches her as he severs her saint's head. She sits by her brother, massacred by his absence. His body is here, but where is his presence? Everything is broken except his silence and nothing was left of him unless it bled. She screams, she screams so loud, it's like her soul from her body leaps. She says, my brother, in the river of his own blood sleeps. She slaps her head so hard that her brother's dead body weeps as his severed head towards the spear is led. She says, oh head that I once adored in awe of its height. Oh head that once embarrassed the moon's night. Oh head, not only are your girls left in fright, but they see your head placed on a spear, drenched blood red. It's as if massacring you wasn't enough, and neither was tearing these girls' hearts in half. We watched the spear that holds your holy head laugh. So today's grief would match yesterday's bloodshed. My eyes scarred by seeing your head on a spear. The tears I cry are blood and tortures me every tear. I see the lion, the other lion's fear, with a severed <laughs> neck into a spear in bed. If you don't care for him, at least care for his children. At least let his head from their eyes be hidden. You torment the little hearts of every orphan, telling them that to Shimmer's sword, Hussein was fed. They killed her brother, yeah. and they left him with no shroud. Yeah. They raised his head, and they raised yeah. it as if they're proud, taking his woman captive before a crowd, and they curse his father yeah. as to Yazid they had. Zainab says, Ya Rasulullah, yeah. oh my grandfather, two of him were torn apart. Oh, my grandfather, his head from his body they part. Oh, my grandfather, nothing would have soothed his heart except your kiss upon his holy forehead. Oh, grandfather, he was killed with no one beside him. He looked to the distance and he saw only them. The silence of the wind, it sang a painful hymn telling them that you're alone and alone you tread. If my father knows this is how we are treated, then how is a spear with my brother's head weighted? Indeed the sword, my brother's blood defeated, but we are left to fight this sword's vengeance on dread. O oh, lion of battle, she says, O oh, Abba Abdullah, O oh, lion of battle, to which battle crawls, O oh, lion of battle, to which battle crawls, O oh, catcher of the flag, if ever it falls, we are left paraded in Yazid's courts and halls. Through torture, death and pain, these women I've led, after they steal his head, as they wail, they take her captive, and his Zainab they steal, leaving in her a wound only he could heal. After they killed him, her brother they behead. After they've killed him, her brother they behead. Assalamu alaikum ya Mawlai, ya Aba Abdullah. Inshallah, we'll be joined after the break for some lamentation by Sayyid Ali Hakim. Inshallah, we'll see you then. Ya Hussein, ya Hussein, ya Hussein. Ya Hussein.